here we are with lesson number four. <clears throat> As you can see, I've taken the time off camera to get that down to that line that I wanted, both the hand and the stick. So we're gonna spend some time now outlining and separating the major parts of this carving. There are several parts. We've got the boots, which have, which have socks on top of them. We have the legs, we have the, the, the shorts, then we have the body, then we have the backpack, we have the roll, and we have the head and the hat. So what we need to do is start to separate those two things. The one thing you've got to remember about relief carving is there are different planes. And if you're looking at this flat piece of wood, you're going to have several different planes. You're going to know which ones are farther from the back and which ones are closer to the back. For instance, if I were to pick a spot, that elbow is the highest point, so some, everything's got to round down from there. But the shorts are underneath the jacket. The leg is underneath the shorts. The socks are outside the jacket, and so on and on and on. So when we look at that piece of wood like that and look at the depth, we have to turn and look at the depth of the, of the finished piece. And so the depth of the finished piece tells me that when I look at it, here is the part that sticks up the farthest. These two, this plane right here is the part that sticks out the farthest. So when you look at that, you see that that sticks up and you see that the jacket is higher than the shorts. The shorts are higher than the leg. The, le the leg is lower than the sock and the sock is about the same plane with a little indentation here for where the, to separate the socks. And so we go up and we look at all these different planes of everything that we need to do. And so laying that aside, we go back to what we need to look at. And what we're going to do is to take our carving and make some marks on it. And the first mark I'm going to make is right here. You probably can't see that, but I'm going to separate that. I'm going to separate these two pieces. I'm going to separate this and I'm going to separate this. And so I'm going to work in stages, work on the bottom. Then I'll go back to the top. And when I work on the bottom, I'll work it in one, two, three, four stages. When I go to the top, I'll work in one, two, three, four, and five stages. And then eventually we'll get to the other stage up here at the hat. But we're just gonna work in different stages. And so I like to start and separate the carving basically into two pieces. Here's the bottom, here's the top. I'll work on the bottom first, then I'll work on the top after that. But right now I'm gonna work on the bottom by making a V-tool cut across here across here, across here, and across here. And then I'll start carving to these lines that I've drawn in. And that's the first thing we're gonna do. So putting on my safety gear again, I have my thumb guard, I have my safety glove. Do not carve without it. I, it seems like every time I sign into Facebook or one of those carving club Facebook pages, there's somebody posting a cut or a stitch or something they've, they've done. I can tell you from experience, from carving, I've never had a serious injury from carving. I've jabbed myself, I've poked myself, I've went through the glove on some occasions. I've never had a serious problem in carving simply because I wear my safety gear. Now you probably notice I don't have a finger and the middle finger's gone, part of the thumb is gone. That was an accident with a table saw. My wife made it clear I could not use the table saw again. If I needed something cut out on a table saw, I have friends who can do it for me. Anyway, Always remember safety, 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 safety. I can't say that enough. Whatever you spend on gloves is a lot cheaper than what you'll spend on one visit to the hospital, one visit to the emergency room, one visit to Doc in the Box. These are not that expensive and they won't protect you from everything, but they do protect you from slashing, which means you're gonna get stitches. But a poke is just a Band-Aid. So always remember to wear your safety gear. Occasionally you'll see me without mine and you need to yell at the screen, put on your glove, dummy, but um, sometimes I do pick it up and want to do something. I'm gonna make four cuts, one, two, three, four. Actually five if I do both parts of the sock. I'm gonna make one cut straight across the carving with my V-tool and I'm just separating the jacket from the shorts. I'm gonna make one more, did I say one, two, three, four, five, yeah. I'm gonna make one cut across the bottom of the boots and that's just separating the boot from the base. I'm gonna make a cut across the bottom of the shorts and I'm gonna make a cut across the top of the sock which really is synonymous with the top of the boot. 
And so I've done that so I can go to the point of starting to round. And so I'm going to start right here with the boot. Again, that boot is fairly flat and I know it's going to round this way and it's going to round this way to a degree, this more than this. And so what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to pick up whatever wood removing tool I use. And I have this handy. This is a neat little OCC knife that I picked up. OCC tools, those are country character tools done by Mike Shipley, great blade. It's the old Denny blades as well. And so he's incorporated his blade, but I like this one because it has a comfortable handle. It's got a little bit of a grip, grip, grip there, groove. And so I can handle that and I can choke up on it without, without having problems. So what I want to do, I just want to round that boot in the front. And all I'm doing is trying to get the rough shape, the rough outline, gross anatomy as, as I've heard Harley Refsaw call it several times. And I'll switch tool because it's easier to get in here with my fishtail gouge. But I just want to start to give that boot a little bit of a, a tech, a little bit of a shape to it. It's not going to look perfect because I'm not worried about details yet. One of the problems I've seen with a lot of carvers, especially when you start out, is adding too much detail at the beginning. Don't worry about that. The detail will come. I've got the front roughly rounded. Work on the back. Move my tools out of the way. I'm trying to get into the habit of keeping my tools all in the same spot so I know where they are because I really hate standing here going, uh, where's such and such tool? And that happens when I just kind of toss them off to the side when I'm done with them. Anyway, I'm doing two things here. I'm getting rid of these saw marks back here and I'm rounding this boot this way. And so I'm rounding down to the base because right now that's the strongest part of the carving. It's got the most wood in it. And I'm rounding just a little bit. I don't want to take off too much wood. I can always take off more, but I don't want to take off a whole lot. And so you can see I'm just starting to do the preliminary rounding. I flip it back over, you start to see that boot come into play. Okay, know that that boot and the sock are going to go way down. I can remove all of those cut marks and the boot actually comes in here. So there's a good portion of that I'm going to take out. I'm going to take a gouge and just, just gouge right in that, right in that plane and round that out. It's hard to do with a knife, so I'm going to go ahead and do it with my with my stubai gouge here and I can get the shape of where that boot is. And then I can come up here and I can start trimming it down and getting that rounded portion to it. Okay, I won't spend a whole lot of time on the boot at once. I will come back to it several times. And as I do with all my carvings, I never start in one area and stay there until I'm done and then move on. Carving is one of those things that has to be done in stages because everything has to come together. And if you don't do it in stages, what you're going to end up doing is carving something that's too small in one area or too large in another, and you end up having to have too much cleanup to do that. I know a carver who, he's one of his first times he carved a bust or a, tried to carve a body. Um, he ended up spending way too much time because he worked from the head down. And by the time he got to the end of his, the bottom of his eight inch block, he only had the head and shoulders. He, he was originally going to have the whole body out of that one 80 inch block. So uh, you spend too much time on one area and you're going to end up putting too much. You're going to end up removing too much of the wood simply by putting in too many details in the original carving. So take time to get the overall shape. If you were doing, if you think of it, if you're a sculptor and you're working in clay, you wouldn't make the face perfect and then go to work on the rest of the body. You'd work in stages. You work in getting the, the main shape of it done and then you'd work on adding uh, the intermediate details and then you'd work on adding the final details. So I've got a boot in there. I'm actually going to shorten that boot from top to bottom because it makes it look too short if it's too too tall. And we'll go, we'll go and we'll trim this back a little bit more. But the next thing I want to do now is, is the shorts and the pants because all of this is going to be, this is the lowest part of that. This is the highest part and this is the second highest part. So I'm just going to draw, a, uh, sorry, not draw, I'm going to cut a, a stop cut across that. And I want to start rounding those shorts because those are the next part that needs to be rounded. 
and I'm actually going to go all the way through. I'm not going to stop there. So go all the way through. Make sure you know which way your grain runs. Grain is running this way, up and down. I usually make my grain run the length of the wood so that it's on the longest part. If I made it run on the shortest, I'd be going cross grain most of the time. I say that because as I carve, if I carved up into here, the grain lines are running this way. And if I carve up into here and I start carving that, that whole thing is going to split off. But if I carve this way, I can slice off a little bit of a, a piece at a time because I'm taking the wood off. And I, as I'm cutting it off, I'm pressing against the bulk of the wood. If I go this way, there's nothing out here to support that wood. And so it's just going to flake off. It's going to split off. Let me show you what that does. If I go up in here, you see it starts to split. Now I get those little... Maybe you can't see them. I hope you can. You get those uneven lines right there in the wood because you split the wood along the lines of the grain. So I'm going to carve the other way. And look how much smoother that is when I carve that way. You can see how smooth that wood is in terms of where that's going to come off. So we're going to spend some time off off camera not too much don't take a lot of wood off but what you want is this wood to be underneath that one in fact let's do it let's do it together we'll work on video number four or number five when we uh, when we come back just uh just tune into video number five when we come back and we'll talk to you then